Hello everyone. So this is a quick tutorial on the long short term memory LSTM neural networks. The idea of this tutorial is that in the last few years, I've seen a number of people and specifically students um, struggling to understand the concept of LSTM. So what I thought about today is to bring this to you in an intuitive way and trying to link it to something that you can um, easily relate to. In the example of today, I'll show you how the LSTM is equivalent to the Las Vegas of deep learning algorithms. This is specifically what I really like to call LSTM all the time, the Las Vegas of uh, deep neural networks, let's say. So let's dive in and understand more about the similarity. So in Las Vegas, there's one main street. Um, it's called Las Vegas Boulevard. And what happens there is that um, on that Las Vegas Boulevard around it, there are a number of casinos situated over there. Um, from these casinos, I'm showing you four um, over here, including Aria Resort, the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, Bellagio, and Caesars Palace. So typically, if you go to Las Vegas, you will travel either by car or you can actually drop your car and start walking from one casino to the other. So the idea is that, um, or the beauty of Las Vegas is that you can just walk with your friends and go inside each of the casinos, have a look, have fun, and then go out and just walk to the other one because they are very close by to each other. Within the example of today, I will um, pretend in this example that we will be driving around on the Las Vegas Boulevard um, until we reach Cosmopolitan and then we drop the car and we start walking from one casino to the other. So um, in this case, assuming that we, we drove the car until the Cosmopolitan, and let's imagine it was a car or even a bus, let's say me and a few of my friends, we stepped out of the car and we went to enter each of these, um, let's say casinos, starting with Cosmo. So what happens there is that each of these casinos is uh, made of a number of gates. So the first gate that we will face is the security gate, let's call it like that. In the language of LSTM, this is called the forget gate. So simply think of it as the place where the security guys will tell you forget about going in. There could be like a certain policy they are following, a set of rules. Could be, for example, in not wearing a mask nowadays or not even vaccinated or for whatever reason. So the forget gate is where the information or in this case, us, me and my friends, um, might be actually blocked from entering that specific casino. So after that specific um, forget gate, if we manage, let's say uh, we were five and one of us was blocked at the gate and the remaining four of us continued inside the casino. The next gate that we usually face, which is the input gate. So let's think about the input gate in this case as um, think about like us going to, let's say, um, a restaurant or a coffee shop and or even a bar like inside this uh, specific casino. So some of us might be ordering food over there and like having some lunch, dinner, whatever, having some drinks, enjoying our time, you know, doing some gambling. So the idea is that even that four of us were allowed to go in, the idea over here is that not all the four of us will be actually ordering food. So there may be only two of us who are hungry and ordering food and like having lunch or dinner or whatever, having drinks. The third gate that comes after that is the output gate. So once you went in, you had your lunch or dinner or had some good time over there, you decided you wanna go out and you continue your journey walking or even by car, it's up to you. So you want to continue your journey after you had fun in that one casino and then go to the other casinos. So basically we have three gates, the forget gate, input gate, and output gate. So the, by the time I continue my journey, let's imagine that I reached to the Caesars Palace. The good thing about um, this structure is that I have some sort of memory. So I know where I came from. So basically, when I'm at Caesar's Palace, the short-term memory, my own short-term memory, 
um, will give me information that, hey, I, I was actually in Bellagio. I just came from Bellagio because I went through every single one of these consecutively or in a serial way. I go inside each one of these and go out, go to the other one and so on. So when I'm at Caesar's Palace, I remember I came from Bellagio. So that's my short term memory. At the same time, I also remember that I drove by the ARIA result. So that's my long term memory. So the beauty of LSTM is that it also offers us the two components, the short term memory and the long term memory. So unlike typical um, recurrent neuron networks, recurrent neuron networks will only remember the short term memory. So if you are at Caesar's Palace, it will say, okay, I know that I just came from the Lagio Hotel and Casino, but it wouldn't remember Aria, for example. So that's the main difference between LSTM, LSTM and RNN. And what I'm saying here, that LSTM follows this specific exact structure. I have a number of um, blocks, these, let's say copy of these blocks, they are all doing the same job. They are all casinos. They all offer gambling places, um, di dining places. Um, they even have hotels, like you can stay in each one of these, get a room and stay there, have fun, drink, food, whatever you wanna do. So they all kind of do the same job. They have kind of the same components, which are the gates. Well, we can also call these filters. And the last thing you want to know about Las Vegas Boulevard over here is that you can also travel in the opposite direction. So you can um, travel from left to right or right to left. It's totally up to you. And in LSTM, we can also travel, let's say, forward to backward. And then we can also travel backward to forward. So we can process the information in one or both directions. If we decide to process the information in both directions, we call that version of LSTM as the bi-directional LSTM. So now that you have an idea about Las Vegas and that I'm saying that it actually looks like LSTM, let's have a look at the block diagram of LSTM. In LSTM, there's also a set of blocks connected consecutively or in serial fashion, as you can see here. One block connects, like the output of one block connects to the input of the other and so on. Just like um, Las Vegas Boulevard, or let's say just the idea of Las Vegas, we also have a information highway or the street that passes by all of these blocks, or in this case, through all of these blocks. We call this information highway as the cell state. So can think of this as a conveyor belt that passes through all of these blocks and we can add information to this conveyor block, uh, to conveyor belt, sorry, and also take information or remove information from it. So just like LSTM, where there was one street, the Las Vegas Boulevard street, we also have our own street and we call it the cell state. Additionally, in each one of these blocks, there are a number of gates. So the first one is the forget gate layer. And this is where the security guy was waiting at the door. So if there are 10 of you guys, like you and your friends, nine of your friends, forget gate, like this is where we decide, for example, seven of you can go inside the casino or the block, three of you stays out. And then the next gate, which is the input gate. So the seventh of you that went inside the casino or the block in this case, which one of them or how many of them are going to go to the restaurant and how many of them are going to order food and drink? So not all of them might be hungry in this case, if I want to relate to the restaurant example. And this is the input gate layer where I will update the information. The last gate over here is also called the output gate layer. And this is where we decide which dimensions across your information, across your data are going out and which of them will be blocked. So it's very similar to what happened in Las Vegas and the idea of consecutive casinos. We have a consecutive set of um, blocks over here doing the same job. Let's dive in into more details. And before I dive in, just to remind you, the car can travel from left to right and right to left. So it's up to you to choose which model do you want to look at LSTM or by direction. So the car in this case can go from left to right, but then you can flip it from right to left as well. 
And these are the icons to remind you of the casino example. So the cell state. Let's look at the um, content of each of these blocks, starting with the cell state. We said this is the information highway or the street that passes through all of these um, blocks in LSTM. So uh, the key to LSTM is this cell state. This is the horizontal line running through the top of the diagram. So think of it as a kind of conveyor belt. Let me show you another image over here. A conveyor belt where boxes are passing through. And let's um, imagine that you're waiting at the end of one of these branches over there, and you can actually decide to get some of these boxes over there. So the idea is that even though, let's say, many of these boxes will go over there in this direction, not all of them will be inspected. So you can open some of the boxes, um, take information or contents out of these boxes and add the new contents to these boxes. So the cell state is a kind of a conveyor belt. It runs um, straight down the entire chain with some minor linear interactions. And LSTM has the ability to add or remove information from the cell state. Again, think of the example where this was a street and cars are traveling in either direction. And the cars can bring you customers, people to go inside the casino and can also take some people from one casino to the other. The next gate, which is called the forget gate, and we pretended that this is actually the security gate. So the first step in our LSTM is to decide what information we are going to throw away from the cell state. In this case, when you talk about information, think of it as a multidimensional set of data. Just like think of it easily like that. So you can over here look at which dimensions to let through and which of them to block. Which one are you going to allow to go through to the update process and which of them are you going to block? So the decision here is like to block or allow uh, the information to pass through or in that case of the casino, which is block some of your friends or allow you all is made by a sigmoid layer over here. That's the sigma, which may, refers to the sigmoid layer. It's called the forget, lay, uh, forget gate layer. What uh, the inputs to this gate are the current input and the previous output. So the output of the previous block. Based on the combination of these two with some sort of weight matrix that is optimized during the analysis, added to some bias, just like a typical neural network, you actually map the output of this gate or the output of that process by using a sigmoid layer into a value or a number between zero and one for each number in the cell state. So one over here will represent completely keep this and zero will represent completely get rid of this, not allowed to pass through. The next gate is the input gate. So refer back to the example where let's say 10, 10 of you tried to enter the casino Three of you were kicked out because, for example, they were not wearing masks or not vaccinated for any reason. And then the seventh of you go inside. And though those who went inside, let's say there are seven of you, if imagine that you are going to the restaurant, so not all of you might be hungry. So if you go to the restaurant, let's say four of you decided to order some food. So over here, the process of like what's happening inside the input gate is made of two parts. The first is also a sigmoid layer, and it's called the input gate layer. Decide which value we will update. So in this part, we decide um, which one of you or how many of you are going to order food, for example, when we are related to the casino. The next part of uh, this process is a tench layer. So this is a tench layer create a vector of new candidates that could be added to the state. So over here, we decided who is going to order food, who's going to update, or which dimension are we going to update, and which one of the dimensions are we not updating or not touching. So the next part or next step in this process is to actually update the information to bring you the food. So in the next step, we will combine these two to create an update to the state. So if you look over here, it's now time to update the old cell state. So that old cell state C of T minus one needs to be updated. So the forget gate 
the output of the forget gate, which is f of t, gets multiplied by c of t minus 1. So we decide who's going in, who's stopping, who's not going in. And the output of this process is added to the output of the update process. And this is how we update it, by adding i with c tilde sub t. So um, we multiply the old state by f, forgetting the things that we decided to forget earlier. Then we add i times um, c tilde. And this is the new candidate values that will go to the next block as a new cell state. The next part of the process is the um, output gate. And this is where we decide, OK, we finished from this casino. We had um, dinner or lunch or whatever drinks. Uh, we had fun. It's now time that we leave to the other casino. And um, the output will be based on our cell state. So if you notice what we have been doing so far, we have decided which, um, let's say, dimensions to update. We updated the dimensions, or referring back to the casino example, we decided who goes in inside the casino, who, go, who is going like among those who were um, filtered and allowed to go inside the casino, who ordered some food or drinks or whatever, and who got actually their food and updated their info. And now we look at how to get some information from this cell state and use it to produce an output. So first we are on a sigmoid layer, which decides which part of the cell state we are going to output. So again, another sigmoid layer to decide which information we are going to let out. And then we put the cell state, that one that we computed earlier, through a tanch to push the value between plus minus one. And then by multiplying by the filter, that um, like the output of that filtering process, who goes out, who stays in, that's how we, um, let's say, get our final output from this um, time step. So as you can see, all what we had to do is to decide three basic processes or three gates or three stages of filtering. So we call these gates as filters. So we had the input gate, uh, sorry, the forget gate, the input gate, and the output gate. That's all, nothing more than this. So always remember the example of the blocks, similar blocks, doing the same job, three gates inside each one of them, forget, input, and output. And that's the whole process that happens over there intuitively. Thank you very much. For more information, you can always refer to Chris Aller's blog. And thank you very much.